There are many LoRa wireless communication modules out there to choose from, but which one is the right choice to go with? The module that I've used made wireless communication a piece of cake even with long range tests. Today in this video, I will be sharing with you guys my experience with E22 LoRa module from eByte where I've implemented a sketch that lets two STM32 microcontrollers exchange the data wirelessly. I've also implemented free RTOS and circular buffer algorithm for data management. We are going to exchange data over air today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before, with a lot of features. They also have open source community, so there are many projects to have a look at. Link is in the description. Alright, so here's my setup. As you can see here, I have two different STM32 microcontrollers, where here I have the STM32 F411. Uh, Cortex M4 and here I have the STM32 F103 Cortex M3 uh, and as you can see both they are connected over UART to this uh, LoRa module so they can communicate wirelessly over LoRa over uh, 868 MHz uh, band and as you may have noticed the LoRa module is connected over UART uh, to my MCU so uh, the commands and the, the packets that should be uh, transmitted over LoRa are sent by the hosting MCU and currently these MCUs are running the same code uh, I have prepared uh, a ping pong uh, wireless communication firmware that's loaded to this STM32 microcontroller so basically when a message is received wirelessly the onboard LED will be toggled and when the wireless communication stops uh, the LED toggling will stop so let me show you a demonstration so here let me press on the reset button so I can stop the communication as you can see here uh, the green LED uh, is stopped and when I release the reset the communication uh, will go back again uh, actually inside the firmware to manage everything uh, I've integrated the free RTOS so uh, this is also a plus in our firmware all right so now let's take this device outside to test its performance all right so here i am i'm going to test this uh, lora module outside uh, to see if it can communicate uh, at least for uh, one for one kilometers uh, so i'm testing this uh, e22 900 t22d uh, lora module so as you can see now this is from the uh, ping pong test as you can see, uh, since the LEDs are toggling, they are exchanging ping pong messages. So the LoRa uh, communication is con uh, is continuing. Uh, but this power bank uh, turns off uh, once a while. So yes, I will go to that side of the island to test uh, this module. So let's see. Okay, so right now I came to the other side of the island. Uh, and uh, the module is currently communicating as you can see the uh, blue LED is toggling now and then uh, because the uh, ping pong messages is being exchanged uh, the other module is located uh, right over there uh, I can't tell actually um, but currently the distance now between the two of the module uh, is around uh, one kilometer yeah it's actually hard to hold both uh, the phone and the module anyways so yes uh, the communication distance is okay this is not the maximum uh, range test but it can communicate wirelessly with a good distance okay so right now let's go back and continue with our tutorial okay so here we are with the LoRa module uh, of configuration I'm using the software that's uh, provided by the manufacturer company uh, of the module and so in order to use this software all I've done is that I hooked up uh, a TTL converter uh, to my module to the RX and TX pin of it and connected the M0 to ground and M1 uh, to the VCC in order to access the configuration mode of the module so when I uh, do this command I can uh, read the values uh, of the configuration like the baud rate parity 
the communication speed, uh, the packet size of the module. So of course I can change these parameters. Of, uh, I adjusted them uh, the way they are right now. So here uh, I'm using the uh, fixed mode. I'm not using the broadcasting mode. Uh, actually, there's one thing I want to mention here is related to the A rate or the uh, communication speed. When you lower this parameter, you can obtain higher communication range. So uh, I wanted to do an outdoor test. So I used a relatively uh, low value like this. Uh, other than that, uh, these parameters are related to the sleep mode. I'm not using sleep mode right now. Uh, the uh, LBT is related to monitoring before transmission. So if the uh, wireless channel is available for data transmission, the transmission will start after that. So if this option is activated, there will be a delay before uh, the actual transmission occurs. And of course, here we have device address, the communication channel, network ID and the key. And here we can see the values of the internal memory uh, of the module. We can see the address of this uh, registers right over here. All right, so here are the commands that are used in order to access the LoRa module memory. So here we have the set register command, read register, set temporary registers, and wireless configuration. So you can either let your MCU configure the module uh, over UART using these commands, or you can use uh, this firmware, which, which is actually using the same commands. Uh, so I'm going with the uh, uh, easy way uh, because uh, this is a good uh, visualization for things. All right, so now let's have a look at the data transmission and reception uh, part of this module. It's actually quite uh, simple and straightforward. There are actually two modes of uh, data transmission, the fixed one uh, and broadcast. So uh, here we can see in the fixed uh, packet, uh, first of all, we have the target address uh, and the target channel. And then we have the data that we want to transmit. So here uh, the communication will be between only two devices. Whereas in the broadcast uh, mode, the address is going to be uh, FF and uh, every device that has the same channel will receive the data transmitted uh, from the transmitter. So in my case, I'm going to stick with the uh, fixed mode because I have only two devices. All right, so here's the firmware that's running on the STM32 microcontroller where I have integrated the FreeRTOS. I may talk about the uh, FreeRTOS integration to STM32 firmware in a separate tutorial. Uh, so let's carry on. Uh, so here, starting from the main, of course, first of all, I have the uh, clock configuration, high level initialization, GPIO DMA and UART initialization. Of course, you know that these are generated from the Cube uh, MX uh, of the STM32. Let's have a look at the activated peripherals. So yes, here we have the Cube IDE. As you can see here, I have the single wire uh, peripheral. It's activated for debug. So here I have two GPIO opens uh, that going to select the uh, operation mode of the LoRa module. And here I have uh, the UART pins, uh, TX and RX. Here's the uh, clock. And here I have the onboard LED uh, GPIO pin. And here are the configured peripherals. So let's have a look at the uh, clock configuration. Of, of course, I'm using here the high speed external uh, clock source. And of course, I'm using the maximum uh, system clock, uh, which is uh, 100 megahertz. So yeah, that's all related to the uh, MCU configuration. Let's get back to our main. So first of all, here we have the LoRa module initialization function where I'm passing the UART handler, DMA transmission function, UART start reception with DMA, packet receive callback, and here are the configuration uh, functions. These are nothing but GPIO selection uh, functions. So uh, here I have for both the uh, transceiver mode and the configuration mode uh, for the uh, LoRa module that we have. So I'm actually doing that because I want to uh, separate the uh, library that's going to use to interface the LoRa module, that is uh, E22900T22D. Uh, so I have no dependency in my code. So this library is going to use the functions that are passed uh, over the initialization process. So you can use it no matter what uh, your MCU is. So here we have uh, pointer functions. And after that, here I'm having two pointers that are assigned to the DMA buffer, which are global buffers. And here I'm calling the transceiver mode function. So now uh, the GPIO uh, pins for the M0 and M1 are set 
to uh, let the uh, LoRa module operate in transceiver mode and here I'm starting the transmission and here I'm starting the packet reception over UART uh, because uh, I've already passed uh, the corresponding function uh, from my main so the DMA reception can start from this point and actually whenever a packet is received over UART to the MCU uh, the following callback will be executed uh, we have it right over here so when this function is called uh, inside the uh, packet reception callback uh, we have here the size of the packet is passed and here's the pointer that's pointing at the uh, reception buffer of the DMA copying the value uh, to the uh, circular buffer that I have in order to keep uh, the packets inside the RAM so I can access them uh, anytime I want which is the purpose of using uh, circular buffer which is a quite useful library that I've implemented over here so here I have the enqueue function in order to uh, store a new packet received to my MCU and whenever my MCU is uh, ready to process this data uh, I can call the dequeue function so I can read from the circular buffer so uh, this library will make my system work as a FIFO first in first out so no packet uh, can be lost during this process alright so let's get back to our library implementation of course here we have covered the part that's related to the packet reception so let's have a look at the uh, packet transmission where I have a task uh, that's dedicated for a packet transmission and we have it uh, over here so first of all uh, this task runs once uh, every one second uh, and here I'm uh, selecting the packet size that's going to be transmitted uh, over UART which is a ping message for characters uh, and then here I'm selecting the uh, receiver address which is 9 of course the module settings can be either done over firmware or you can uh, connect uh, a TTL converter and hook it up uh, to your module and configure it uh, from the firmware that we have discussed uh, at the beginning so the address was set to be 9 uh, and the communication channel was set to be uh, 12 hex which is uh, 18 decimal so here uh, this task will run once every one second and the uh, packet uh, ping will be transmitted over LoRa to the receiver side so here in the transmission function we see that uh, the necessary parameters uh, are put uh, inside this uh, packet handler so here I am selecting the address and here I'm selecting the communication channel passed from the function parameter and then I'm copying the data packet content to the data buffer and then the whole uh, packet handler is uh, put inside the, the circular buffer so I can process it later on for transmission and this is actually done inside the uh, module handler and we can have a look at it uh, from here so what this function does is actually it checks if there's data inside the uh, transmission circular buffer and data inside the reception circular buffer so we were talking about the transmission buffer if there is data we check if the port is ready so here we are checking if there is no data being transmitted and then we read the data that we had put inside the circular buffer uh, we copy it to the DMA buffer and we start the transmission so you will notice that uh, the LoRa manager uh, function is put inside a task that's running continuously and we can have a look at it uh, from here in the task handler so uh, this function runs uh, every 100 milliseconds uh, to check if there is data inside the circular buffers uh, in order to process them okay so right now I have my logic analyzer hooked up to the UART uh, TX and RX pins uh, of my MCU which is also connected to the LoRa module uh, and here we have the packets uh, transmitted and received uh, over LoRa wirelessly of course so now let's zoom in uh, to one of the packets so if we zoom into this packet here we have the pink packet which is sent by the transmitter of course uh, the first two bytes are the address byte uh, of the uh, receiver side so uh, if we have a look at the hex yes so this is uh, 9 uh, and the channel uh, is 18 that the communication is going on uh, and here we have the four bytes of the data that's uh, being transmitted uh, which is nothing but the ping message and as a response uh, in the receiver side it's responding uh, with pong message so since we are in the transmitter side uh, here we can see only the received uh, message and it's uh, pong message all right that's all about this tutorial this brings me to the end of it 
I will be sharing all the related materials in my GitHub repository. You will find its link in the video description. If you have learned something new today, please like this video, share it among your friends and tell them about useful electronics. Stay tuned for the upcoming tutorial and bye bye.